You're joking, right? Well, I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid. I know that that better than anyone. Which uh, Bronny made me a cappuccino. I mean, I pressed the button on the machine. You still made it, and you and you whipped the uh, no the, the no. machine whipped the milk. I didn't do anything. There's something. It's not bad. It's nothing to do with you, but there's something about. Well, also, those beans are two weeks old. That'll definitely do it. They're not fresh. Okay, I like certain certain cappuccinos are better than other cappuccinos. For That's sure. All. Yeah. That's no, all there right. are plenty of times where I'll get an espresso, and I'll just say, "Ugh, don't like the taste yeah. of it." Yeah. And on the cruise. The cappuccino was so good and so smooth that now it fucked me off of Starbucks, which is the worst. Well, Starbucks is always... We, we, I know, but I, to- de- I tolerated it. You've gone down that path. But I don't know. Like, there are other places near you, but we've, we've also had this conversation like No, I'm times. just going to stop on the way and get Carmelo on the way, if I have time. Shout out. All right, what's going on, Bronnie? Nothing. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How was the concert last night? I went to um, a Boys Like Girls concert, which I, it's, I, I feel like... People will either really know that band or they won't at all. I don't know it. Um, it did you load the air in here? Ooh, it's, that's disgusting. It's about to fall off. Oh, don't touch it. Don't, Why? It's about don't to fall touch it. Don't this, peel it. This one fell off. That's going to scar. No, I don't think so. Because look, that's what th- this looked like that. It is atrocious. Do not do it. Talking about scabbing his knees. Let me lower the air. So, Boys Like Girls is a like pop punk band. They're kind of in the same vein as. Fall Out Boy, Blink-182, that did that Did that? No. Not as big as that. No, no, no. I didn't say popularity. I said they're in the same genre. Okay. Like, they make that same kind of music. And Understood, so when I was in yeah. middle school, it was like that was, you know, so they, were, they had like three or four songs when I was in middle school that were like hits, full-on hits. Okay. Um, but I didn't even know they were a band still. But one of my friends is a fan of theirs, and it was her birthday, so we all went. And it was fun. Nice. It, it just, just being at concerts is fun. Yeah, I get it for you. I'm not a big concert guy. I don't like so it. So I equally enjoy them and am like, this is the worst. Because it is. It's very crowded. Like, people are pu- constantly pushing oh, by no. you. Pushing I, by it ain't you. fucking happening for me. And not everyone's happening. sweaty. Nope, not and happening. And everyone's fat. Not happening. And it's extremely loud. Yeah, not happening. So, so for all those reasons, you do, like, you have to push it down, right? You have to be like... You have to be like, I know yeah, I don't right. like these, but this is part of it. And so I'm just going Isn't to push it Isn't it better being down. home when you couch, relax, and watch it? But certain things, no. So, that's one I don't of the like the mass things. group things. I don't like that. I, ne- I never have. That's just my thing. Music is definitely one of the few, few things that is irreplaceable by being at home. Not only is it not just as good, it's extremely worse. Like if you watched a con- like no watching a concert, I, I but like it. watching a football game at home and it's watching a football better. game in the thing, it's much like better. it it might be much better or it's just as good. Better, but watching a concert at home and being at a concert, there's like literally no, agree, there's no comparison. But I I just don't like it. It's just not my thing. I just don't like it. Yeah, it's yeah. Not I mean, my it's thing. not. I I would never be like, oh, dad, you should go to this. You know. Small venue where there's it's only standing room and we're all like but pushed I, up against I each other. I liked when we went to the one in Broward and we saw Eddie Vedder. Like well, I was sitting, sitting in down. a theater. I enjoyed. And that. It was a nice, intimate acoustic concert. I don't want people standing up. In this front was a of me. Yeah. this was a punk concert. Like there was a mosh pit. Like, yeah, I'd be miserable. People were punching each other. Yeah, you know, no, like I would be fucking miserable. Look at this. I'll show you the video. Like, look at this. No, let me see. Oh, you got to be... Like a mosh pit. Okay, yeah. The, this is the world we live in. These no, are well, the, this is your generation invented mosh. So don't say this no, is the world we live in. This is the in. world we live in with people... No, I'm talking about... No, I'm not saying generation. But the world we live in, that this is what is going to live, breathe the air in and what, run they're, our world. They're, they're, feeling, they're enjoying the music. I don't see oh, that as bad. they're fucking idiots. Mosh culture is like very good where they... Like there are plenty of videos where... Like a girl will get Gosh. thrown in accidentally or like a guy falls or something and like everyone instantly stops and is like, okay, let's... Because it's about having fun, what they're doing. Yeah, it's that not looks about, like a great time. But to them, to them, it's fun. Idiots. But concerts, I, I agree. There are definitely cons. Certs. There are definitely cons and the cons are very, very big cons. Promise me you won't pick it. Oh, no, I don't. It'll fall off. Wow, that's nasty. You're going to save it? You're gonna fry it up. My other one, I already, I already saved. You ate it. Um, but 
But the, I think the pros, if you like the band, the pros outweigh the cons. Like what when the few songs that they played came on that I knew, I was like, this is like I would like this to is get to see Neil Diamond would be great. Well, that's not going to be a rowdy concert. Yeah, that's that's the opposite of a rowdy but Andre concert. Bocelli. I saw who was great. It's <laughs> not a concert. That's a performance. You know, there's a difference. Andre Bocelli standing there doing opera, bl- being blind. That's a performance, a musical theater performance. I enjoyed that. But a concert is like I just, don't, I just don't like being around a lot of people. Yeah, I no, just don't I, like I it. Feel Even that. going to football games, I don't like it. Like, and then you go to a, bu- I don't know. It's just not my. But thing. But then people like you would like. The second floor of the this venue, we went to see it at Revolution Live, which is in Fort Lauderdale, which is like a small venue, which is great because you can like feel up close. Yes. And I've seen great bands. I saw X Ambassadors there before they were big. Oh, interesting. That's it would be good. I saw Houndmouth there before they were big. But um, I would see Sia. <laughs> I like Sia. Okay. Why you like Sia's that? not cause Sia, well, it's just funny, but also Sia's not playing at this a Sia show is like an arena show. You know, yeah, those are but, different because everyone has seats. But when you have I, seats, it's a game changer. Yeah, remember we went to, I took you up to Long Island to see Slash and we're standing there. Right, so like, that was this venue. And mom's was like, you got to wear shoes. I'm like, everyone's right. Dad wore Gucci, leather Gucci loafers fucking, to a rock concert. My feet were in pink. It's my fucking nails like, yeah, you got to look nice. I'm like, oh my God, why do I even listen to half that shit? You have to look nice to a rock concert of Long oh Island. My God. <laughs> the you cares? were in high school? Were you in high school? Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, early high school, that must have been. Oh, my God, the things you do for your but kids. But concerts are very fun, but there are cons to it. So you just have to, like... There are certs. Okay. Yeah, you just have to, like, accept that. And I, I could see, as I age, it being less harder tolerant, to accept Less tolerance. That. Because I was standing there, and people keep pushing by you, pushing by you, and I had to be like, deep breath, it, just let it happen. We're all here to just watch, you know? But I could see and, like... Not having that patience when I think I'm as you get age. older, you want le- you less tolerance. But the don't. second floor of this venue, which a lot of places do, is like was the VIP. So it was just like tables with chairs. And when I looked up there, like the whole second floor, maybe there were like thirty people standing there. And so like everyone had a lot of room. Much better. So that's what you do if you wanted to like see a band. Correct. Right. Correct. But there is something special about like being in the pit. Good. And Let being be like special. jostled around. And everyone around you knows all the words. Like, that's fun. I 100% do not want to be jostled by anybody, <laughs> except your mother. We were definitely getting jostled. And Bryce is standing there yelling every time the con- the, the lead singer. He's one of the douchebags. Yeah. Group, yeah. He's the one who everyone's like, fuck this guy. Yeah, I agree. Every time this Which song- is also stupid as concerning how many people are around and drunk. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah. No, I kept saying, like, I was like, dude, you have to shut up. Every time the singer would get quiet, like, between songs or whatever, Bryce would yell, show us your dick. And everyone would like turn around because it was quiet. <laughs> the singer didn't acknowledge it once. I don't aggravate. But it was me. just like, what are you doing? He's such. It's a funny one. one time, maybe, but he did it like seven. I have friends that will follow Bruce Springsteen all over the world. Yeah. They've seen his concert hundreds of times, hundreds. Yeah, now, I don't get that. Now let me explain something to you. I I don't. Maybe it gives them a reason to, to go to place, but they don't need it because they travel a lot. But why I don't get it is because it's the same exact thing, isn't it? Right, like I, I love music. It's like watching the same movie over and over. Yeah. I, I, it's even more than that because at least the movie, it's like you can like, you know, do other things. I would not do it. I, but everyone's different. I love music and I lo- I've seen my favorite band Pearl Jam three times. But like I'm good to not see them for a couple of years after each time. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I couldn't I, even imagine going I get every it. other they week. They like it. I don't get it. People but, used to follow fish around and see well, them every they, other day. The, the, the Grateful Dead were the yeah. biggest. Yeah. People would see them hundreds of times. Yeah, my friends have seen him over a hundred times. You know, this, Tucker this. Carlson is a deadhead. He used to, he would go and like caravan, which is like so shocking when you think about it. He would caravan and go to see the Grateful Dead. And like, he's kind of a hippie at his core. I can see that. Yeah. I can see I that. I mean, he also like isn't, people, I, this is like totally a pivot. But people think of him as like a MAGA guy. He's not. He doesn't li- even really like Trump. He said he wouldn't want to vote for him. He just you just spoke like him. He said he wouldn't want to vote for him. You know, <laughs> he's he does just that been stuff. on that. He's like, I just think he's like Bill Maher. Like it's so crazy and retarded that you have to just see the obvious stuff. And because he's just anti-establishment, that like like me, like I'm anti-establishment. I just don't like the government. So then people are like, oh, you're a Trump supporter, and it's like, no, not at all. What are you talking about? I was watching this morning since January the. Other th- they let in 2.4 million people over the border since January. We don't, we don't even have it as bad as Europe has it. Okay, but I'm not worried about Europe. I'm I saying, am. 
Because if, if they fall, then we're the next one. Okay, but isn't that crazy? And I don't want like what's happening. It's what's happening in um like Italy right now is getting the brunt of it. There are these like little towns in southern Italy that have three thousand people that live in the entire town, like beautiful quaint right, Italian towns right. that you see videos that like. There was one that went viral where there were eight thousand, six or eight thousand African migrants that came into this town in one day. So the town has three thousand people. Right, it's a very small. It's a. It's every family knows one another. Yeah, and now they're tripled out, double or tripled what? their population by these African migrants. It's like Italy's over. Done. You know, like that. That Done. ruins You'll a town. Hundred percent. And the culture behind. I don't it. even like mean like oh the the. the Black people are going to come no, and no, loot. No. I just mean like th- that no, town a, as it was. If you took 6,000 New Yorkers and put them there, it's right, done. Exactly. It's ruined. The town's over. Yeah, exactly. And what makes that so unique is its uniqueness and culture. And, and it's they, been around for 1,000 years. Yeah, that's fucked up. It's horrible. That's the same thing of saying, okay, we're going to bring pythons to the Ever- Everglades. It ruined the Everglades. Right. And, and it's like that was just a few. It's like saying, oh, there are only 3,000 alligators. We're going to bring 10,000 pythons. It's like done. you're going to kill all the done. alligators done. by done. doing done. that. done. And yeah. so that's happening all over Europe. And that's why you're seeing all these European countries are moving really far right. At, at least like the media is so like well, scared it's of it. Well, it's taken by Muslims too. It's a very, yeah. Yeah, totally. African migrants, m- Muslim and migrants, is all Pakistani Muslim, migrants. And so migrants. It's changing the whole fucking culture and yeah. history. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame. It's like what happened to Great Neck. Great Neck, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the Iranian Jews came. It used to be like different. And now the whole culture of Great Neck changed. The yeah. style of the home. It's all Persian. Everything's changed. Exactly right. Yeah. And so that, that's. But there are these people moved there and bought homes and just chose to go there. Right. This Here, is people just showing up. Just one throwing time. them in. Yeah. Just showing yeah. up. And like, sure, New York can it handle. It better at the end. Oh, good. New York can handle an influx of A little Italian town can't. And so all these. All these European countries, the the natives, like the native Italians, the native Czech, right? Like all these people who are, their countries are being overflown or overrun. They're all becoming like much more like far right, I, I guess. And they don't but want it. Right. And so they're all electing all the, like the, the prime minister of Italy was elected last year, this woman, uh, yeah, she's Maloney. She's no bullshit, right? No, she, she literally is like, we're going to, like she only ran on the platform of, we are going to take our country back. Like, Good, and, and I agree. And, but but, but every, the whole media is like, she's a fascist. Who she's just Hitler. Fuck. Good for her. But it's like, the, the migrants are forcing that to happen. Okay. You can't, come, you same, can't take some over someone's country and expect them to be like, oh yeah, we'll let you. Okay. It just doesn't make First sense. First of all, the beauty of Italy are those towns. Right. The history. That's why I want to go. So, yeah. so even- And so, that's going to be over. Listen, so even, I think the- I think her, the woman in charge of Italy, I'm in agreement with her. Patricia so Maloney or e- something? Even in the um, the Texas mayor, right? So Governor. Governor Abbott. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they are, who's Democrats? He, um, no, this was, a, Abbott, this was a mayor of- uh, uh, Of Austin? No, of, um, I was watching this morning, a mayor of this- A border of, town? Probably. Yes, border town, okay. who's a Dem. And he's like, it ain't working. Yeah. You know, he's like, the president hasn't been here once, just so you know. The vice president has been here once. But yet on Tuesday, the president's going to United Auto Workers Union and picketing, picketing with the, with the union people. Yeah, Could well, you imagine? he wants their votes. No, wait, correct. But so. And he knows he's not getting First Texas of all, votes. he should butt the fuck out. I don't think a president should be picked on a picketing line, number one. I don't think they should. They shouldn't be on a picket line. Right? But, I agree. But so you have the Democrats saying, this ain't fucking working. We can't let all these people. The mayor of New York. A the city. Mayor, yeah, well, Mayor Adams literally okay, last wait, week was like, but, was like, we're done. But I can't the mayor do this. of the mayor, mayor of New York, I don't feel so bad because because he invited, he it. welcomed it with open arms, like right. stop being this know, fucking woke thing. But I, but we do as a country, we do it like because this was the thing with COVID. I remember when everyone was like so like judgmental about like not getting the vaccine or whatever. And I remember in my mind, I was like, one day you're going to Regret realize it. that right. this was the wrong choice and that I made the right choice. And but and. Like, we just have to, as a country, realize if we're on opposite sides, like, if you think you're right and it turns out you're wrong, I'll welcome you to the right side. 
So like if if, Fair enough, if Mayor Adams right. was like, we're doing the right thing, we're doing the right thing, and then he <clears throat> realized that it's wrong. That's okay, you're right. Actually, I that's agree the with you. best because I agree then it's like we, we can have him now teach all the other I, people. I, still, I, I, yeah, we I agree we can't be you. like, no, fuck you. You you're right. chose your side. So I, so I, so I you know take what I mean? back what I said because I agree with you on that. Um, but it's, it's a major, major problem. So this mayor was saying this morning that it's a real issue and th- there's videos that when they come through the, bar- the, the barbed wire... That no one's sending them back. They're letting them yeah, in. Yeah. And and they're not really, even though the, the, they don't qualify for asylum, but so what did, what did Biden do? Biden gave out 40,000 work visas to them. So the mayor's saying that doesn't solve the problem because now instead of sending people back, what you need to- We're send, incentivizing them to keep coming. Okay, exactly right. So you need to send them back and show videos of it and put on social media and TV so right. that you can't come here. But instead, they're clipping the, the, the barbed wire, letting them in. That's what I said. It's a problem. When we were, when you, I was saying, I hate that DeSantis like chartered a bus and sent them all up to New York. I was like, you charter that bus and you send it deep back into Mexico. That's I, the I, only you're, you're way right. you you're can right. solve the problems to be like, nope, the second you come in, we will 100% just send you right back and we will keep it's so bad. doing it. And, and that's how you incentivize them to not, or disincentivize and them. And then you have now, so I was also watching this morning, so you, the, the United Auto Workers Union, right? So you have the situation where they want a 36%, pay, this is what they want, 30, 36% pay increase. They want a cost of living increase. And they want, wait, and the, here's, the, here's the best but, part. But they might, those things might be justified. Wait, wait, no, here's the best part. And they want a four-day work week. Okay, I don't, I'm sorry. Reagan said it best. If the, when the government employees wanted to um, go on a strike, said, you're, you're fired, we'll get different government employees. I don't agree, you can't, you want to get paid more for working less? That's not what we're based upon, Bronson. That's well, a problem. And why should the president be on that picking line? Yeah, well, the, we I know the, why. The we know why. The, the four-day work week is, is yeah, the, we can talk about that one. But the, the cost of living increase in their pay, like, I would imagine that's probably justified. In, in our current I do, inflation, I, I have no issue at, oh, the price of everything has kept going up and salaries have stayed the same but for I, decades. Like, I have no issue with that. There's got to be some, I would imagine third, there's an imbalance. But a 30 Again, 36% increase and a four-day work week. Right. But then again, don't you want that? But the free market, like this is the free market working itself out. <coughs> the free, the beauty of the free market is no, that there these, are caps to certain things, right? Like there are natural But the caps. union is like this mafia. It's a little bit different. Right, but eventually, like we're seeing the union, we're seeing the union push and pull play out against the union in terms of the Hollywood strike. That's true. The actors union is like a mafia, right? You can say they're like an yeah. organized thing and they were like we have the power we're going to show you and these studios are just holding out they're saying yep, nope yep. and now it's a war of attrition where the where the actors are keep trying like they're folding and folding and now shows like bill maher um last week just announced he was like i'm bringing my show back i'm ignoring this this um what's a, a, this strike he was like I, I i feel for you the people on strike i do okay but you're not the only ones that work in this industry. They're all, which, like, so all my friends who work in the industry, They're right? out of jobs. None of them are actors or writers, but none of them can work. And, and have no worked for a no year. Income. Right, because of the actor strike. So Bill Maher came out and he was like, he was like, there are other people in this industry that your decisions are affecting. I have my lighting guys, my camera guys, you know, all these people on my crew that now haven't been working. So we're coming back and we're just not going to have written segments. It's going to be all interview stuff. So we don't need writers. And that's what we're going to do. And so Drew Barrymore also did the same thing for her show. She said the same thing. But so many- Can you blame them? But No, not at all. But people freaked out at Drew Barrymore online. I think, I'm sure people probably freaked out at Bill Maher too. But Bill Maher doesn't give a shit. Right, and Drew Barrymore, two days after she announced that her show was coming back, she said, we're we're, we're not not coming back. So how great is Bill Maher then? You got to respect that. Yeah. But we're seeing that the union power, that's why I'm saying it's the free market will work itself out. Eventually- uh, someone will have to give in because of money. So eventually these studios, which a lot of them are public companies, so they, they you know, answer to shareholders. Eventually those shareholders are going to say, okay, guys, like we got to start making money again. We have to give in to some I demands. And eventually the actors are going to have to give in to some demands. So that's like with the, uni- no, with the it, auto but- workers, like, so they're demanding 36. They might come to an agreement of 15, you know, or 20. And that might be what's fair for everyone. And that's free, that's capitalism. No, I get it. I get it. Like when, when the whole COVID thing and they're shutting down COVID and the, the companies and 
people not working in the office. And I said, nope. And I stood my grant yeah. position. And if you lost people, then you lost people. Right. And you would find someone else. Right. That would be okay but I, with it. Right. But I, I respect Bill Maher with regards to that. Yeah. So his show is coming back. He's going to be, he's the only one in you know, Hollywood. This, he started it. This might, you know, if this continues, this might do away with the, with the guild. Oh you, yeah, it, you might get in, in, uh, independent freelance writers, right? And you could say, and they're going to contract directly with the studios and get paid per job or whatever it is, and that's oh, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's going to do away with the Hollywood system. I think it's going to force everyone to be kind of just independent, like all movies and TV shows. Right, negotiate your best deal with the studio for whatever you want. Right, and or not even like it. The Hollywood system was just like there were five big players, and you only like that was your only choice. You know, it was like almost a monopoly. Um, like. And they were all owned by each other. So it was like kind of antitrust, like sketchy type shit that was going on. But that was the Hollywood system. This is kind of putting the nail in the coffin of that. Um, I don't know how that, people do it. If you they're not. Families, they're not doing it. <laughs> what do they do? They're, the, the guild, the, so the Screen Actors Guild has a fund for this that all these big yeah, rich actors- are not paying been, enough. But the rich actors have been paying millions into this fund. And which is also, there's got to be weird shit going on there. And so the guild is paying out people- to not work, which seems so sketch too. They're paying everyone who's it like striking and like isn't working, or whatever, and is in the guild is getting subsidized by the guild to yeah, continue but they're to not strike. Probably and not making break. the money that they were making though. No, no, I'm sure they're not. But how do you like if I would say, okay, like if said, okay, you're not being paid, I got bills to pay. Right. Dip in your savings for all that shit because the guild, and I would people fucking do a it. lot of people think of um they're like, oh, these are young, struggling actors who are like my age, you know. So there's th- those kind of people that they don't have the big responsibilities where they could probably take the time. I don't think they or can. Or they could work They're other families. jobs. No, no. I'm saying the people like in my position who are striking, right? That's who most people think are striking in this in this um, Hollywood strike. But most of the people in the Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild are like you, they're 40-year-old adults, 50-year-old adult kids who have college. a mortgage and kids. And it's like they need income more so than the people my age. Terrible. Um, the auto Terrible. workers, there, there's so many union strikes right now. All, the auto workers went on strike. It's the so edu- corrupt. The teachers are planning on but strike. It's, so, it's corrupt. It really Starbucks, is. All the Starbucks workers are on strike, um, which that one's fine. But the problem with the auto workers one is that worries me because the auto, American auto workers is already such a fragile industry you know what i mean like if if these big com- if the auto workers strike and the big companies at a certain point they're just like and eh, we're going to cut our losses this isn't worth it anymore we're just going to go overseas and manufacture overseas right like i feel like it's forcing them to do that because they're, they're already the majority of man of car manufacturing is overseas i feel like they were just holding on to the american manufacturing as like a traditional thing you know like ford was like we got like how could we not have american car manufacturers but if all of their workers are like, now nah, we're not working, they're just going to ship off to the Philippines or something. And they're, and they're better they're better workers. The, and the cars will be cheaper. And, and, the, and better. I don't mean cheaper in quality. I mean, they'll be cheaper in price. And, and better, probably they'll last better. longer. Right. And then it's like, and now we're, we're for, but then again, like I understand these auto workers probably are not treated right or whatever. So it's, it's, it's a double-edged it's a, sword. It's a catch-22, I agree. Yeah. But uh, then it's also a whole... Um, simp- like the fact that there are all these union strikes means that like there's some serious underlying issues. If everyone in the workforce is feeling like taken advantage of or they're not getting what they, their fair share of what they believe, that means there are deep problems. We know there's deep problems, but isn't that just also sometimes you just have, don't have a great job. It just is what it is. I know, and- but, but when, but 15 years ago, you could have not a great job but you could still afford your groceries. You can't do no, that anymore. I'm telling you, who was I talking to? I can't I, afford groceries. Okay, They're so I, expensive. Even at my income, I see how hard it is in the level. Yeah. Like things, my, my insurance bills have gone up and all my, and everything. My, my health insurance, my, the real property taxes. What about my AC bill? My electric bill monthly? Oh my God. It's gone up 40%. Same. My electric, our Bryce and my, I literally got it yesterday. Our electric bill used to be 120 for the month, it's two and change. Two oh seven was yeah. this. I was like, "What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. We're not even. We're barely even home." Correct. Like, I'm, okay. we're home for right. eight hours so, a day. So we don't have any kids living with us, and our bill has gone above forty percent. Yeah, it, it's 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 something's wrong. Yeah, and so Seriously so if wrong. you if you're like supporting a family on this one job, and the job is 
just a, a salary, right? Like you are on a, on a salary, so you could have like months where you're like, oh, that was really great. And you can have a shit month too. Yeah, but if you're just on like a set salary, right? So it's the same amount of money, but everything else is going up. Now Not you're easy. like, how can I do this? Not easy. But yeah. you, then you have to live lesser. The people, but you can't. How do you live lesser? Pe- most people live above their means you have to but that's not the people who are going on strike dad not the people who are living above their means no i'm not the united I'm, auto workers aren't I, living above I their agree. means i look i agree they're I, living probably at the bottom I'm wrong not, that they i'm can. not against people i'm just saying that biden should be should not be on the picket line and i also think that the unions are very corrupt and i think the leaders of the union are very corrupt that's just my opinion oh i'm sure yeah but but just because a leader is corrupt doesn't mean that the that the message people. behind the masses is true, is but good the, or bad. But, but it's, again, it's it's never going to be for the benefit of the of the people. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's so corrupt, such bullshit. Like the government's not for the benefit of the people. People, the yeah. the, the, the people get fucked. They think they just join the Kool Aid. They drink the Kool Aid and join the the cause, so to speak. But it's just you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, unions and masses of disgruntled workers can cause huge change. We've literally had countries completely overthrown by that. So it's not good to have this many upset right, but the workers. Pre- but the president should not be involved. No, the and president but, should but the, fuck but the out. problem is he's, he's trying to cover it. Because the only reason why, why so many workers would be upset is means that there's a governmental issue that's, go, that's wrong in this country. Because right? like, if one union, one industry was, was striking and upset, then you could be like, oh... That industry has problems with it. No, but, but we, if it's every we industry, know there's problems. Look at you. But, get, but, but they're all Biden's <clears throat> fault. That's what I'm saying. Right. So Biden on the picket line is just trying to save face. It's actually all these every single picketer, every single person who's striking, they're not going to vote for Biden then next that, because correct. they're like we're striking under against your, you right, under your um, leadership. Right. Exactly. I mean, look, we weren't striking five years <clears throat> ago. We had the issue with they can't get baby formula. I mean, there's some serious problems. Well, that was supply pro- chain. Which is well, a bit different. The point is, but still, the, and the expense of things, these are problems. We understand oh, the yeah. problems, and, 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 and I don't know what the, well, I know what the fix is, but I hear you. All right, what else, Home Love? <laughs> we could totally pivot to something well, else. Well, pivot, just, I was, was bringing up some topics. I guess we I, can talk. I was trying to think of, get a little more involved and bring some topics This up. This actually has to do with, with, with what we're talking about, just things being so expensive. Yep. Um, yeah, watch your cords behind you with the chair. Yeah, no, I know. That's okay. why I'm putting my foot here. Okay. I, this Facebook post for a Miami apartment for rent had like went viral because I'll just show you like it's a it's a like a listing okay. for an apartment yeah, in yeah. Miami and it just goes it's just like crazy so we'll, I'll just show you it because so let's see it says oh no did it go away God damn it okay maybe never mind hold on let me well, find what it. was it about are the rents still high in Miami Brian. Yeah, so that's what this is. Um, oh, fuck. I'm not going to be able to find it. Tell me about it. What was it? It was just like a very small apartment for a lot of money, but like insanely small. But I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. And people were uh, saying something about it? Well, because it, everyone was like, how is this the state of our con-? Like it was like for $1,700. The whole apartment was the size of this room. And they were calling it like micro. They call it a micro efficiency. Apartment. Could you imagine that they, they give it? They make it sound. They make it sound. Um, they make it sound like sexy, like it's a cool thing, right? Like like tiny home, micro efficiency unit. Um, but I, it was like a big. I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to find it, but whatever. So why were people upset over it? People weren't. A, people were just like. People were like, our country's fucked. Like seventeen hundred dollars for. This, not even in, it wasn't even in downtown. It was like some, I don't know, somewhere. But whatever, I, I'm not going to be able to find so it. So it's not a big deal. they're renting homes in West Boca, Bronnie, for 12000 15000 a month. Renting a home. That means you got to make twenty grand just for the home. Yeah. Renting a home, West Boca. Well, at, Bronnie, I mean, at this point. That's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, most people listening here don't know what you mean, like why West Boca would be shocking for those prices. But- the, like, who can afford to buy a home anyways with how high well, the interest Well, you can't is. with interest rates. You can't Right, so it. it's like you just got to rent it and wait till the interest Should rates come down. Should we rent the Miami condo? Probably can get top dollar for it. Then they yeah. ruin the furniture, right? Well, yeah, if you're, if you're renting it out, you got to realize that it's not yours anymore. Like you're, no, I get it, but, but I have to rent the furniture because I'm going to do what that furniture is made for that and they're going to ruin it. If you want to rent it, rent it. 
Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you would want to. No, I, don't, I would not want to. If anything, just sell it. Why? I'm never selling real estate again. No? Okay. No. When I'm done with it, then I'll rent it. Why would I sell it? Yeah. I, I don't know. If you wanted money? No. Nah. What, because what if it goes down? If I, yeah. You mean I should do that and buy the Georgia property? I, I, I don't right, know. We'll talk later. I don't yeah, know. I'm not, yeah. um, I'm not selling. Yeah. So I, I can't find this unit anymore. It must have, it must have like gotten, the listing must have been taken off or something. Isn't that interesting? Because I can't find it. Um, That's so funny. People have nothing else to do with their time that the listing becomes. No, well, it was like some, someone found it on TikTok and was like sharing it. And then and on things TikTok, go viral. Yeah, and it's just like, it's not like people, like I saw it, I wasn't spending my time on it. I just was scrolling TikTok and it popped up in three seconds. It's not it's like funny I'm, what, I'm what, spending what, time. Okay, but it's funny what goes viral and what doesn't go viral. Yeah, I, it's, it's just completely nonsensical. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you see? Nope. The, the, there's a few things I guess that you see. The, um, there's the, which we can just touch on. Did you see like those alien bodies huh. that they brought up in Mexico? No. So they, there was like this guy, this UFO researcher or whatever, that presented two like alien bodies to Mexican Congress in their con Like it was like an official Congress I got to see this. Seriously? And they presented these Is bodies. Is this true? Yes. No. It was and like, not as yeah. hoax or scam. Well, we don't know, but it was, it's not a hoax that they were presented in Congress. Um, where do you come up with this shit? What do you mean? Where do you do see I this on a podcast? This was the big, this was all over the news. Yeah, I don't watch the news. All over the news. All right, I got to see this. You're going to have to make it bigger. Um, I want to find the original. Here, let's see. What hell is that? Oh, that's Facebook. One minute, let me see this. Congress alien is fake. Please listen to this. Because despite what you may think, this is real and I can uh, prove That's not, that's not the No, yeah, I don't like that shit. Um, and where'd they get it from? We don't know. So here, this is... Remember these little guys bigger. from last week? Well, these so-called alien corpses have now undergone lab testing. Yep, that's right. They've had a full CT scan and x-rays. The bodies were presented to Congress in Mexico last week by a self-proclaimed UFO expert named Jaime Mausson. He claimed they had been discovered in Peru like in 2017 dirt. and were 1,800 years old. His presentation went viral with many calling the bodies aliens. The so-called corpses have been tested by Jose de Jesus Salce Benitez, reportedly a military doctor and forensic expert, who says the specimens each belong to a single skeleton and have not been manipulated. But the findings have been widely disputed by scientists. Last week, a NASA scientist responded to the news and urged the men to make samples available to the world's scientific community, and we'll see what's there. Remember these little I don't guys. believe it, but look at that thing. Wait a minute. No, that, it, it's, it's, I'll tell you the reason why I don't really believe it. Okay, here's my thoughts on it. Number one is, why now? Where'd they find it? Two is, you really think aliens resemble us that much? Yeah, I mean, this does I look pretty human. I mean, come on. It's such bullshit. Two arms, two legs, the regular torso, the hip bone. Well, that might, yeah, I don't know. That might just be the best design of of. I just find that I find no, I just find that too similar. Like it's a movie. I don't know. I don't. But maybe and and they're handling it, and I don't know. So rough with it. Like mom would drop it. There there are multiple answers to why, like, to why aliens might look like us, (laughs) and like the movies through evolution. That's just the way the sure or we're from them, right? Like we we evolved from them, so that could be why we look alike, or they evolved from us. Fair enough. Those are reasons why we could look alike. Um, the reason why in movies they all look like that and why we think like that is because they that actually might be what they look like. You know what I mean? Like the first, like we have the stories from people. The movies get their images from people like abduction stories and sightings and stuff, and people report those. So that could be actually what they just look like, and so that's why we always see or they the can little be green in that men. DM, in what do you call it? DMT? DMT. Yeah. Um. It, it could be any of those, or it could just be this is the best form to f- that that evolves. Like there's this theory, there's this um, thing that happens in nature. I think they call it like um, yeah. Here, look. So it's called carcinogenic. 
carcinization. Carcinization is an exa- a phenomenon of convergent evolution, which is when different species independently evolve the same traits. And so there's this thing where there are so many different things that all evolved into think into the strong crabs. No, like there are so many different animals that have nothing to do with each other. They're not crabs or like they're, di- they're just different animals that all evolved eventually to look like crabs because apparently nature just really likes that form factor for whatever reason. It's like the best form, best thing for nature. So literally all these things, this is why do animals keep evolving into crabs? Crab-like bodies are so favorable that they've evolved at least five different times. So it's like this body type might just be like two legs standing up, eyes facing forward. Like that just might be the best thing that nature- Eyes on the side would be better for humans. Eyes on the side are bad. Why? Eyes on the side, don't, you don't get depth if you don't have your eyes on the side, if you have your eyes on the side. Eyes facing the- Why not four eyes? Why not eyes on the, or eyes in the back and eyes in the front? That that hasn't evolved anywhere on on Earth, so it probably saying. doesn't make sense. If if it if it was like favorable, it would have evolved probably. But two eyes facing forward. That's why we're some like monkeys. The monkeys can swing in trees, where like uh, I don't know an animal that doesn't have their eyes. Every single predator predators have eyes in every front. Every single predator has two eyes directly in front because you can see depth. Right, like. Binoculars are two, you know, like, or 3D glasses. You have to put it two, you have to put it in the right way to see that depth, right? So it's just, if our eyes were on the side, our brains wouldn't be able to see depth well. And so we couldn't, like, calculate distance. You know, it was a, a cool movie which made when you talk about the crab. Was it Sector Nine? District Nine. District it's a great Nine. Great movie. It really is a great, and I've seen it a couple times because it's, it's very interesting. Like, it always holds up. Yeah, because, like, you, it's a, you, you flick through the channel and you, Catch it midstream, and then it's extremely and I, and I just stop. Yeah, it's and I have very, to very watch watchable. it. It's such a cool movie, and the tech that's that movie is over ten years yeah, old, it's and such, it's still it looks new, like it looks. Great. And he was great for it. Yeah, Charlton Copley. That's yeah. his name. No, it's a good movie. Oh, I love that movie. It's like a top thirty movie of, of my lifetime on so many different levels. Yeah. What it what it represents, and it's like it's just cool, but it also has like. A message. It's it's an immigrant message. It's a hundred percent right. It's, it's about like ghetto, migrants, the ghettos. Yeah, but but like illegal aliens, like coming here, taking over our culture, making their own. It's very interesting. Yeah, uh, I love that movie. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, so another thing. Poor guy. What? Oh hell. Oh poor guy. Yeah. Um, what was his name? I feel bad. Not Eustace. What was his I name? I don't know. But I, um, what happened? He got bit. No, the the ink, yeah, went in his mouth from the thing, and they started and turning him into, into the a roach, a prawn, fucking prawns. That's what they yeah. were. They were called prawns, uh, which is a crab, they're, like a crab. Yeah, they're like a crab too, like a crab roach. Yeah, um, <coughs> it was fuck, so. I gotta look up his name. Um, District Nine, Vilkis, Vilkis, yeah. Um, he's a good actor. He's a great actor. <clears throat> you know, he's also a great fucking actor. One actor. One of my favorite movies, and this is going to come out the wrong way, was Django. I loved Django it. Django Unchained. Why yeah. would that come out the wrong I way? Because it was the, the black white thing. But I'm saying but Django was a so, Tarantino movie. So good. Yeah. I like Quentin Tarantino. I like all his movies. Actually, I do. I like every one of them. The movie was so good. Jamie Foxx was so good in it. Okay, Jamie Foxx is the most talented man in he's Hollywood. He's a great I, actor. Listen, that. and I also got to tell you, um, the German guy. Christoph Waltz. Love him. Yeah. Love him. Oh, yeah. He's a great He's actor. a great, and, 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 and fucking, um, we talked about Sinopa, but um, Leonardo, Leonardo in that was great. It's yeah. such a good fucking movie. Oh, excellent. Also a movie in the middle stream, like 300 or Gladiator, you, you don't search anymore and you watch where from yeah. that point on. So 300 and Gladiator are Roman Empire movies. Great. So you movie do think about the Roman Empire? No, I don't think. Three hundred is actually not Roman Empire; it's Greek. Three hundred yeah. is a great movie. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, um, and I like that actor too. Um, Gerard yeah, Butler. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's like a dude. You know. Yeah, he's kind of a little. He's like extended his his um, catalog too much. I think. Like, I think he's doing too many movies where it's yeah. diluting his star. Right, potential. but I liked him being the tough guy. Yeah, no, and he he's cool. Definitely, he's cool. It's funny. Um, let's see. I have so many 
so many things. Go for it. Here that I I'm all yours. Know, which, um, well, look how fast it's 40 minutes already. Where does it go? It's crazy. No, where does it fucking go? There, there's a question that has always been asked to, to like, it's just like people ask it. It's like a would you rather. Actually, okay. it literally is a would you rather. But we've never done it. So I was listening to a podcast where they asked their guest, and I was like, oh my God, I never asked dad that question. So the question is, would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? Do you know what a thought daughter is? I do not. Like a thought, you know what that is? No. Uh, <laughs> it's like a slutty girl, but not like, not like slutty, but also like slutty on the internet. Like a girl who would have an OnlyFans maybe, or would like post on an Instagram picture where like, you know, like you can kind of just like see your boobs. That's like a thought daughter or a thought. Like you never heard Instagram thought? No. Okay. So would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? Okay. That's an interesting question. Um, so the girl is just very promiscuous and she, nude. She does nude stuff. She's slutty and she's outwardly slutty. She's slutty to the world. Probably a gay son. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it doesn't bother me. But a slutty daughter would? Yeah, because a gay son is just their sexuality, and I don't yeah. really care. And, and it, it, like, it's so funny. Like, ten, okay, I don't understand the homosexuality. <laughs> no, I, I can't even remember. Like, no, no, I don't understand the blacks. Like, that's no, the no, way you no, said No, that. but my point, is, my point is, if, my, if it was a flamboyant gay son. That's kind I, of what we're, that's kind of what the Or like is. an Uncle Alec the, would never bother the me. The question isn't just like. Oh, like me, but I like men. It's like a, a a fag. That's what it is, or like a slut. Talking one that goes around with the thong on the parade. No, I mean that's an extreme. That's a thought in and of itself. That's a good question. I probably rather have a gay son. Yeah, I think a gay son would, would be easier. Because but, it's just you could just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, no, but but a, a, having a daughter who is like. Outwardly to the world, I think, I think a gay son just has to be gay, still have a normal life, and just could be a good good kid. Someone who a girl who is sexual like that, has I think issues. issues. Yeah, that's probably why. Like issues, and is probably going to have a fucked up life, or like have bad experiences, very bad. But then experiences. again, like it's weird because like dudes think about sex all the time. So why shouldn't a girl be able to think about sex? Because all women the time? aren't like that. I understand that, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. Oh, uh, uh, the average but that's woman's a, that's mind. A good, would you rather? That's a tough one. I bet you most people say they rather the daughter that's sexual. So what? It uh, most of the time, what people find is that men say they'd rather have the thought daughter, and women ra- say they'd rather have the gay son, which is interesting. I just think, I think most of the time men f- would find it harder to have a gay son because a lot of a lot of men already do have thoughty daughters. And I think a lot of women would like to have a gay son because it's like a daughter. Listen, I, I, the only reason why I wouldn't, I would feel bad if my son was gay is I just think that I, as a parent, and it's going to come out wrong, you like to just have them, I would like my kids to just have a normal traditional life. Doesn't mean that if you're gay, you can't, but, but if my son was like gay, where it's like, where you be yeah. so extreme, yeah. I would rather have the thought I'd daughter. Ra- oh, definitely. I'm definitely. being honest with you. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody's, okay, remember the kid we saw at first watch? Yesterday, I would have a thought daughter. Thought. <laughs> She's not thinking, Dad. It's thought. Thought. T H O T. Right. But yeah. thought. That's thought. Thought daughter. Thought daughter. Thought daughter. That's okay. what it's. Yeah. But I'd rather have that. I could not have. I'm sorry. I know it sounds fucked up. I cannot have my kid come home every day and say, give me a hug. <laughs> no, but that would bother me. A kid like that would yeah. bother me. I, I it think, would bother I, me. I think a thought daughter would be very hard. Okay. What if that was your son and one of first watch? You wouldn't have a hard time with that? Well, that, that's like autistic. I don't know. No, you don't know that. We didn't talk to the kid. No, I know. But just the looking at. Okay. But like having a daughter who like, who's just around town, just like, because it's like, oh. it's different. A, a, a gay guy is like, just, it's just uh, still a guy who's okay, like. But is there a gay, is it a gay I don't guy know. Not, who is. It's just you, not, that's not the question, you know? Okay. But there's a lot of what ifs to it. Yeah. But like a, like a girl, like your, your kid your baby who is like no, I'd so getting that, dicked I'd so down that, around I'd town so that for, J, for jj up but even just the fact like i feel like a like a her 
her mind is like that. She's fucked up. That's like something. It's like I have a friend concerned. who has. Who have a, I have a friend whose daughter's an infomaniac, has real sexual. Yeah, like, that's crazy. But that's a different level. That's like she has a mental issue. Unbelievable. How does she? How do they know she's an nymphomaniac? Oh, they know. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, isn't your friend a fucking sex addict? Yeah, but he's not a nymphomaniac. But I guess that's sex what that addict. is. That's what I meant, sex addict. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Oh, I guess that is what it is. Yes, yeah, I have a friend sex who's a sex addict, but he's a man. It's different. It's still fucked up. You oh, said it, he would go into a fucking ho- store. Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't want to tell us things on the, on the show without his permission, but I'm just saying it is a mental issue. Yeah. Yeah, but you are a little more accepting of a guy who's a sex addict as to a girl. Yeah, a girl yes. who's a, and I don't know if that's right or wrong, but a girl who, a, a very slutty girl in my mind, I'm like, oh, like, you know, you're godless. Like, you, you know, you're, you're not like, something's wrong with you. A guy who's like that, I'm like, eh, you're probably just a shitty guy. You know, I but get that's it. unfair of that me. It is unfair. That's just our society the way we rape, but it is unfair. I agree completely. But I also, I don't know if, I think part of that is society and I think part of it is nature. I think the double women, standard, right? Women are no, no, not double standard. Just naturally, I think female humans, women are naturally less slutty. Yeah, and men are naturally more slutty. And Horn if, dogs. if you just look to to the animal kingdom too, like the we male always, lion, we always, yeah, we we always go back to like evolution if you, biology. If you, if you just look at the uh, cavemen days, we always, we always go to lions. Uh, we always <laughs> well, lions are alphas. Yeah, but but like the the lion. <laughs> but do we not always lion, go back to like the fucking? Uh, but that's what it is. Like the the male lion will just want like his goal is to impregnate as many women as possible. Uh-huh, and the women's goal men, is to find the one. Men do not want to impregnate, <laughs> but they want to have sex as much as they can. Yeah, because that's by the way that's what we think about all the time. Yeah, and yeah. women, if, and if women are thinking about that all the time, then I'm like, something's wrong with her. I agree. She was abused. Yeah, <laughs> she probably has a high pitched voice. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, a thought daughter would be hard. But I also think too, like, so there's this whole thing like slaw, which is right, sex and lover, sex and love addicts. These, these, I've never been involved in my life at the age of fifty six. In the past five years, with the amount of there's a label for everything, yeah. it, but it it's used, like Alcoholics Anonymous. No, it's the same wait, thing. Wait, AA, wait, Salah. Wait, wait, Ronnie. We used to just say someone's fucked up. Now everything is a label to it to, to make it where it's okay. It's the weirdest thing in the world. If you put a label to it, it almost becomes like an illness, and we can't shun them because then well, we're not good people. Do it. Yeah, a label to every fucking thing is a label. I fucking can't stand it. And by yeah. the way, a fucking Biden speaker, the, the black chick, the fucking lesbian with the fucking fucked up eye. Uh, Karen John Perry. I saw it today with the fucking eyeshadow. She's a trigger for me. I fucking can't stand her. I don't her. think anyone likes her. Okay. First of all, that in itself says a lot about our fucking uh, government uh, position. She's a fucking retard and a half. Yeah. Who? It is, well, I they hired her because she's a black wait, lesbian. I know that. But they couldn't have found a better black lesbian? No. <laughs> Lizzo would have been a better choice. She's, she's not a lesbian. You know, yeah. She's so fucking, I, first of all, she says nothing. She literally says nothing. And then never. you look at her, she is she that said. dumb? No, is she so? I think it's also just the job. Look, Nowadays, that she, job. No, but, but Jen Sucky was a little bit better and I couldn't stand her. I, I didn't like her more. Okay. She was more like she would like reprimand you okay. and, and I shame you. fucking hate that fucking chick. She's a trigger for me. Karen. Yeah, I can't stand her. All right, move on. You were saying. Um. The so labels. Yeah, uh, no, just sex and love addicts is a big thing now. Like a lot of people are like. So they're, equating, they're, they're paralleling and combine sex and love. So when you were Very a kid, different. it was a sex addict. But now, it, no, it, but now it's, it's one. They're see? saying it's sex and love No, but see, it, that's to make it okay. Don't you understand that? Well, so what I think is with that is. So alcohol is going to be alcoholic and dehydrated beverage people. No, no, no. But they're saying these people, like their sex is the. Is the, the byproduct of lack of, the, of love, right? Of their love addiction, Give me a, they feel they need more love. In it's their not life. a love addiction. It could but be I control. Think, it could be power. It could be many things. Yeah, could for have been men, abused for men. I th- I think women who are in slaw, which is like, I think now it's become more women that are are in it than men. I can't stand the labels. That I think is the like. They just are missing something in their lives. Like I don't know if that's an addiction. I think like any I think anybody that has an addiction or an issue or a problem, there's some void or something. It's a symptom of an, of a, an issue, which is okay. We acknowledge that. But Except stop. some people, I do think, have just 
a predisposition. They have a genetic. Okay. Pre- like they have one sip of alcohol and they're like, oh, I'm addicted. Okay, but some but, people have that. But uh, yes, but, but and the drug addictions are different. The Someone label, who's addicted to opiates. The label thing has to fucking stop. But I, I, so I agree it's with a lot of It's humanizing and making it okay. Yeah, but like someone who, who gets prescribed oxy for their back surgery. Different story. They're, that, they might not have any issue and they're just at it. that can be anybody. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yes. But I think the majority of alcoholics, the majority of gambling addicts, the majority of sex addicts, I think it's a, an, an issue, a deeper issue, another issue. We know that. That's being expressed in this that's form. That's the channel it's coming right. in. Right, food addicts, same thing. Like yes. people who are addicted to food. But I don't, but I don't agree with the fact that it, to put this label to make it okay. And you can't, and it, it's, I don't think it's a love thing. I think for men, it's probably not as much. But maybe they didn't get nurtured and the love they need the same way. But I think, I think for like, and this is just generalizing, but I think for men, se- male sex addicts, some of them, it's probably just like a genetic thing where they're just like something, but some most sex drive thing is just wrong in them. Or I like think most overdrive. men want sex, a lot of it. Okay, but, but. Then you don't understand what sex addicts are. Yes, I do. I'm just I'm just breaking up saying something do you, different. Do you do you want sex a lot? Yes. Would you would you not care who you're having sex with at all just because you want sex? No, there's a deeper issue there. Right. And so that's what it is. Like, yeah, sure, men love sex. Men want to have sex a lot, but like it's not they're not addicted. No. Where it's like they will give up everything there's else. A problem to there. do like, that's yeah, they'll a ruin serious, their life just for the serious, sex. Serious problem. Yeah. Serious problem. But I think for women, the love, at, like I think that's why, eh. I think sex and love addicts, it, it's just saying male and female addicts. You know, it's like the male are the sex, the female why, are the love. Okay, or why Because women, I feel like women don't even, like sex is much more about the love and the connection for women than just the physical act of it. I feel like men, mo- the majority of it is just the physical act. I don't know, I think the labels are a big mistake. Okay, but that's not what I just said. I know, I hear you, I'm, I hear you. Yeah, but what do you think about what I said? I don't, I think that you're making, a, I don't know if I necessarily agree, I think you're making a general statement, I think that women could be sex addicts too, and it's not about the love component or, or lack of love. But I think women when, like why, and this is a general statement for sure, but why women enjoy sex is more for the love aspect. And men I don't enjoy know. sex Plenty more Plenty women for, out today, the women are so promiscuous. But, and they're, but they're not, ha- and, this is what we always talk about. They're doing it 100%. They're being physical, but they're not happy because the love isn't there. That's what I'm saying. But men can do casual sex and they don't care because it's the physical aspect. That's proving my point. That's exactly what I'm saying. We've talked about that, how women, this casual sex culture is like dying because all these women are like, this is horrible. I feel horrible. And I think it's because sex is not just a physical act for they women. Need, they need meaning behind it. Where men, it, a lot of times it isn't just a physical act, but it can be. For men, a sex can just be a physical act. I don't think it can be for women. I think there's always some emotional investment that's put into sex, if they want it or not. Every time that, like, and again, it's general and it depends on the woman. Yeah, women are a little more complex than when it comes to that component of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree, but I think there are more women today that are more, it could just be sex. So you think women's brains have just like completely changed hardwired or do you think they're tricking themselves? I think, I think they say that and they, it's not the truth. That's okay. my stance. All right. I don't disagree. Because what do you think disagree. happened then? So 20 years they <coughs> maybe, weren't, that wasn't maybe, like it, what, maybe, their brains have changed? No, maybe they are just, with the way the times have changed and social media, it's more acceptable for women to be freer sexually and they're okay with so it. So you think where, they always were, and they, they were pushed down. So like when you were gay, you couldn't come out, and now you can come out, and it's more acceptable. But do you think? But so with the gay example, there are way like twenty five percent of the young generation is gay. Do you think that twenty five percent of humans were always gay, and now it's just acceptable, or do you think because it's been accept, it's accepted now, so many people are just like hopping on the bandwagon? I think the second. I think. I think it's. I don't think a quarter yeah, of humans are I gay. I tend to agree with you on that. But is it true quarter of, is that of what the they're young saying? generation? How fucked up is that? Gen Z. How fucked up is that? Um, LGBT numbers. Oh, is yeah, it, yeah. Are they Gen Z or? G- I have no idea. The labels again. I couldn't even fucking tell you what the 21% labels. of That's Gen Z. That's huge. Yeah. 21% of Gen Z identifies as LGBT. That's huge. Um, Identify. Here, no, this is an, an updated one. Um, yeah, one in five Gen Z 
identifies as LGBT. And that number is only expected to go up according to a Gallup poll. Could you imagine? So it's 21, See, it's 20.8 it. of Gen Z. Millennials. It's weird. Um, well, millennials is 10.5. That's my generation. Gen X, which is you, is 4.2. Baby boomers, which is your grandparents, is 2.6. So like that's not natural. You know what I mean? That's not, Something's going on. Let's say the, yeah. either the foods, the chemicals, the pesticides, something. And, and, and that's not just, oh, we now accept it. So No, something like, there's is. There's no way one in five. How, how do they even Because they, they poll it. They poll it. They ask people. And then they get a. Do they go to East Hollywood and do that? What do they poll? West Hollywood. West Hollywood. Um, yeah, that's I don't definitely know. concerning. It's weird. They got to follow the advice. Okay. Very weird. People got to write in more for these. You got to post it for them. Okay. Well, that's a long one. So this is anonymous. Uh, hey, John and Braun, big fan of the podcast and really enjoy laughing at your banter and hearing like-minded conversations on my commute. Thank you. My question is for is primarily for John as he's been in a successful marriage for so long, but I would also like to hear Braun's opinion since he's closer to our age. Um. Have we done this one? No, I don't think so. Um, okay, to preface my question, I will give you a bit of backstory about my marriage. My husband and I have been together for five years, and we recently celebrated our first wedding anniversary. I'm 27. He's 31. He's a wonderful husband, excellent provider and protector, and we truly are best friends. We rarely argue bearing the usual marital tiffs. There have never been any issues of infidelity or distrust from either of us. A few weeks ago, we had a huge argument. I was the maid of honor in my best friend's wedding, Oh, did we do this we one? We did this one. And Shit. she was talking to the guy. Yeah, I might be out of Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be out. Hold on. Wow, Brian, we might have to end the follow advice segment. If people well, we can all just do it when people write in new ones. Right, you right, know? right, right, right. Um, okay, I don't think we've done this one. This is from Katie. Hi, John and Braun. I'm 22-year-old. Now we did do this one. This was the teacher. Yeah, You're I'm so out. Funny. I'm out, I think. Wow, we, we exhausted the follow um, advice. No big deal. Because I forget to delete some of them. Let's see. Okay, here's one we haven't done, I don't think. This is from Michael. I dated a woman that was using meth while I was at work. When I found out, I told her things were over. At this time, she told me she was pregnant. We only dated for six months. <sighs> now I have zero proof that she's actually pregnant because when I asked at the end of the relationship, which is when she dropped the info on me, she replied that she brought, bought three pregnancy tests and two were positive. I asked to see one of them and she... St- stated that she didn't have them because she threw them away. She's been out of my house for three months and is still insisting that she's pregnant with my child. I've asked for her to at least send me a sonogram, and she said, I will not. I'm 42, no kids, uh, currently an OPS manager in the logistics world. I'd love to hear what you think. Love the podcast. I think you just ride it out. Well, right? he has no choice. He's, she's gonna, look, she's, Eventually, she's going to not be pregnant. Or be pregnant. Or be pregnant. And you could see it, right? But so, what happens if she is pregnant? I mean, I well, guess well, you're, he has you no can't choice. do anything right now anyway. can't do anything. She sounds like a fucking whack dude. And she was, if she's pregnant on meth, that fucking, you got to, okay. Push her down the stairs. Now, if, if. Shh, push her down. Ronnie, you're retarded. I didn't say that. Ronnie, if she is pregnant and gives birth, he has to immediately fight for full custody because it's a meth, she's a fucking. Why would he want that kid? Why, or would he. It's his kid. A meth kid. But you can, Okay. I don't want, want a meth baby. But you with you, a crazy woman wait, has half the genes. No, you got to go for soul, soul custody. But I don't want half my. You gonna? But it's his I'm, kid I'm too. Pret- no, pretending it's not my kid. Okay, I'm so just. I'm just. We can't help you. Is it Michael? Yeah. Sorry, buddy. We. No, can, I we, think you just got to wait till the he baby's has no born. choice. I think Mike got to give or, it up. The baby's not born, dude. We all know this is fake. She's I think it's fake. She's a fucking uh, crack. Because if she wanted, your, she if she really wanted She'd you, under, show it to you. Right. If she really was pregnant, she was like, I'm want. Your life to be over. Or I want you to be with me. She would show you all the shit. But if she is pregnant, you have to fucking go for a DNA test, paternity test. You have no choice. Yeah. And then you got to write into us and let us know, or fucking DM us. More important, because it's not real. We can't give you advice right now because a lot of it's too much what ifs. Yeah. Okay. And everyone listening, write in if you have advice, or we've just solved all our listeners' problems, which would be great. Right, fair enough. No yeah. problem. Yeah. But how do they write in? Uh, it's just in the, the there's a a link in the description to it. And I also want everybody to uh, to follow Brycey on Instagram. What is it? Steak Fried Bryce. Steak Fried, B-R-Y-C-E. It's yep. fucking great. You will love it. Please follow him. He will appreciate it. We will appreciate it. 
We got to take care of our peeps. All right, Brian, I love you. Love you too. Bye, everybody. Thank you. You're joking, right? Well, I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid.